Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to go through what I personally think of the Sony 135 1.8 GM lens. So I've had this lens for like about a month and you guys have already seen kind of my little review of the best lens for dog photography ever, which is the Sigma 105 1.4. I want to just revisit that conversation with this lens because I think if you'd have watched that video you'll know that I was undecided about which one of these to buy anyway so I've gone ahead and I've bought this on a good show deal from the photography show and I've had it for about a month and I've used it on paid shoots and personal projects and just put it through its paces. So I wanted to run through that with you guys today in terms of what I personally believe is important and what you guys actually would want to know when it comes to portrait photography, natural light stuff with this lens. In this video, you're gonna see some raw files. So the raw files are obviously raw files. They've not been edited. So where do we start? Well, I think that it's probably a good idea to kind of look at the specs. I don't wanna go into things in too much technical detail because to be honest, I don't actually care. All I care about is does it take a good photograph is it fast enough and is it easy for me to use so those are kind of like my list of things I actually care about and when it comes to this lens that's what I want to discuss so in terms of the lens itself it's got an aperture ring which if you're not used to having an aperture ring it can take a little bit to get used to I personally found myself accidentally flicking it from the camera setting the aperture to f22 which obviously have massive ramifications in terms of my exposure but if you're aware of it you know exactly what's happened when you've done that and you can just flick it back over and off you go. So the aperture ring is something that's a little bit special. There are focus lock buttons. I personally don't use those. And then there's also the kind of focus range and AF-MF switch. So just kind of normal things that you would have on a lens. The range is quite nice to have. It kind of feels a little bit like a telephoto zoom lens almost and it's buttons. Uh, but most of the time you're probably not going to be switching those on and off. In terms of its size and weight and how it compares to the other two lenses that I think most people would probably compare this to. So you've got the Sony 135 1.8 GM lens. Then on the table here, we've also got the Sigma 105 1.4 art lens. And then also we have the Sony 70-200 GM lens. And in terms of its weight, size, price, and image quality, focus speed, how it handles backlight, all of those things we're gonna cover off in this review. So when when it comes to the weight, the 135 1.8 is actually the lightest of all three lenses on the table in terms of its size, the smallest. So if you can see the top point there of that lens, it sits there. And so we've got the smallest in terms of its size. If we're taking into consideration the price here, we've got them going from this is like the most affordable lens and then this one and then this one. So it's kind of like stacked up. You've got those kind of specs. I, I don't care how heavy a lens is. I care about the photographs that it can take personally. So the weight has never really been a decision factor for me. What definitely has been a decision factor though is speed. Speed and capability in backlight when using it with a Sony A7R 3 Now I know that these lenses work really well and kind of similar with every other Sony body. So there's very little difference there. When it comes to backlight, you guys know that I've had issues with Sigma art lenses in the past in terms of it's just not allowing me to focus on the subject. And I'm working with, in these situations, dogs. So the animal IAF is just not working well. We thought it was a Sony body issue. We thought it was a lens issue. We, we tried different things. And actually, we can't really find out what it actually is. But when I use the Sony GM lenses, there is no issue shooting into backlight. So that I think kind of gives us a summary. So it's not really the camera body that's at fault because I can get tack sharp images in a very harsh backlight with a very dark dog exposing for the highlights with this lens and there's no issue at all. So in terms of its focus speed, it doesn't hunt a lot in those conditions. It's actually really rapid. It is a great lens. But what about if you're shooting, say for example, action in backlight? That gives you uh, and your camera a whole host of other issues to work through. And using this lens just as a test run whilst we were out shooting Pippi for the online course videos, we did run through a few little bits of action drills. And what we found was actually testing using the camera on expanded flexible spot and also on wide that the lens performed actually really quite well definitely not perfect but really really well we then 
short action outdoors in really good light. So super bright sunshine, super harsh light, and this is fast action again. And the lens performed really, really well. Again, really, really well. It's not perfect, but it's not a sport lens. So it shouldn't, like it doesn't need to be perfect, but for action work, it is great. And a hundred times better than the Sigma 105 1.4 are for action. So they're kind of like on par-ish. I would say that this is probably a little bit faster and a little bit sharper than the 70 to 200 2.8 GM but great. So then what did we try? Then we tried just shooting some nice beautiful portraits in different locations and obviously knowing your distances and the compression factors of things we shot some beautiful beautiful portraits with this lens and those were in very low light conditions, backlit conditions and also just kind of like norm normal, normal outdoor conditions really. So we did all of those different things and then I thought well what would anybody else want to do? So I was like do you know what? Screw it, I'm gonna use this lens for a full shoot with two toddlers in the woods. I think working with children is a really good test of equipment because, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, a dog's more, you can put a dog on a lead and tell it to sit. You can't do that with a child. So we photographed some absolutely beautiful twins Oh my goodness, they are absolutely gorgeous. So we went out and we shot the twins with this lens and I only had this lens on the camera. I did not, it was hard. Though at times, I will admit, I did want to just be able to zoom out and zoom in like I would have been able to do on a 70 to 200, but we ended that shoot with over 250 images that were super tack sharp in all the right places in varying light conditions from quite open areas to much more closed off areas of the woodland. In terms of the bokeh rendition, absolutely brilliant. Um, you would expect really nothing less. I love the bokeh still a bit more out of the 105 1.4 Sigma R, I would personally say, but that's probably because it's a slightly wider focal length. So if you're setting up the exact same shot, you will be able to get closer to the subject with the same composition with this lens than you would with this lens, right? So in terms of that, I think it's great. So we shot it, what did we do? So we did backlit, like super harsh backlit, well lit portraits, dimly lit portraits, action shots in low light and backlight, action shots in really good harsh light. We did a full shoot with it. And so what then is the verdict? What is the verdict of this lens? I don't wanna make a lens review really long because I don't think it has to be. I think if you're looking for something to sit in your lens lineup and you don't have a 135 already, this lens is absolutely incredible. If you are not doing paid portrait sessions and you don't currently have a lens, then this is an amazing lens to have. I still personally would suggest for professional photographers to have a 70 to 200 on hand because you can increase your sales volume and value by the variety that you can get with this lens. That being said, it's absolutely doable to do a full portrait shoot with a 135 on the camera. So you just need to know that you're gonna have to be moving your feet, getting up, getting down, moving around, and kind of having maybe a little bit more control over your subject. So in terms of what age group in human portraits that I would use this lens on exclusively and comfortably, I would probably say maybe five to five years plus because those children can take a little bit of direction and you will have a little bit more control. In terms of dogs, would I recommend this lens? Absolutely. Oh yeah, 100%. Will I be sending this lens back? No. Will I use it every single time I go out? No, probably not. But will I reach for it if I need it? Absolutely. I know that it will deliver, I can rely on it, and the image quality is beautiful. I really don't know what else I can say about a lens, so that's it. If you like this review, please do let me know. If you'd like more kit reviews, then please do let me know. And yeah, if you wanna see any of those images edited, apart from the Pippi ones, cause they're in the online course, let me know as well. And we can always do a full edit of those.